Beatrice Andersen, Chair of the Norwegian Nobel Committee. Tell me the significance of this year's laureate. Well, what we would like to address with this prize is the importance of civil society and the efforts made by individuals whom we usually name human rights activists, people who work for rule of law uh, and uh, anti-militarist movements. What we like to show is the importance of civil societies and the choices of individuals to stand up against injustices, against war, and for these values that I just described. Could you describe also the uh, individual laureates uh, briefly? Yes. Um, Alice Bialyatsky is a, a, a man slightly over 60 years old, and he has literally dedicated his entire life to um, work for exactly these values. And he has um, done it at a very high cost already when he was a young uh, soldier doing military service. He was in trouble for distributing literature. He has been expelled from jobs and he has spent several years in prison and is presently in detention without trial and what we are told under appalling conditions. And Memorial, the, the Russian organization. Memorial has its roots back to the Soviet Union where it evolved a civil rights um, uh, uh, where it evolved a human rights movement initiated um, by uh, the grand old lady of, of the Russian um, intelligentsia, Svetlana Ganushkina, and uh, the former uh, laureate, Andrei Sakharov. And the idea was to document the atrocities first done under Stalin time, and the organization has also documented atrocities committed by state um, in more present time. I have highlighted the work they did during the uh, Chechen war. And the organization's aim is in its name, memory. Um, they have an ambition of being the memory of the nation, of the Russian nation, and to avoid future atrocities by documenting and making people aware of the cost of historical atrocities. And then there is the Center for Civil Liberties in, in the Ukraine. How does that fit in with this year's Nobel Peace Prize? Well, as you very well know, uh, Ukraine was an uh, evolving democracy and uh, uh, we wanted to highlight a Ukrainian representative of civil society who through many years have worked exactly for strengthening democracy and developing uh, a, a civil society and as you know in recent Ukrainian history people have very often voted with their feet and what connects these three prizes together is exactly that people can stand up and make a great difference for a uh, positive development in their countries. That is the common fe feature between the, uh, between the three laureates. Definitely, and uh, another obvious common feature is that they are united by the same goals, in spite of the borders that divide the three nations. This is an area of uh, Europe in deep trouble now, harassed by war and unrest in many ways. Uh, what kind of signal is it the Nobel uh, Peace Prize Committee wants to convey? 
Well, our major signal is always peace, no more war, end the war, and develop uh, societies that are sustainable against authoritarian regime that have a tendency to suppress and commit aggression acts. That is our message. Is it fair to say that the, this year's prize has an address, namely the Kremlin? Not particularly the Kremlin, but the Kremlin is part of this war and is the aggressor in the war. The address is to the people who are standing up against this development and authoritarian regime. We give a prize for two people who are champions of peace. We do not give a prize against anyone. The war in Ukraine has been going on now for more than half a year. Do you think that this year's prize uh, has an impact uh, on the war and the peace effort? Uh, I do not believe that this prize has an immediate impact on the development of the war. But what I deeply believe in and what the committee deeply believes in is that the kind of work that these um, Peace Prize laureates represent in the long run will make a difference and will have an impact on the future development because this is what people want, safe societies where people have a say and where they are not victims of atrocities and uh, war. This is the second time in two years that you have a Russian uh, laureate. Do you think that is being acknowledged in Russia? I am sure it is being observed, but my message is that Russia, this very large state and with such a rich culture and history, has unfortunately drawn attention to itself by suppressing important values that is the mandate of the Nobel Peace Prize to uh, defend. Last year's prize was addressing the importance of freedom of speech and freedom of information and represented by journalists from two different countries, but the prize addressed all states that suppress freedom of speech. This year's prize, it is obvious if we wanted to address the ongoing war and the importance of civil society in combating war, we couldn't avoid Russia. And Memorial has been on our radar for many, many years exactly because it has this notion of the importance of documentation, which is very close up to a legal um, based society where people are being held accountable for war crimes, but also for the development of the culture that a nation knows its history, where they went wrong, where they went astray. It has to be part of the history, atrocities committed in the past to avoid them in the future. Of course, it was widely anticipated and expected this year that the price would somehow reflect the war in, in Ukraine. Was it a difficult decision within the committee to land on those three laureates that you have? Uh, obviously, we have deliberated carefully and we have looked into several solutions, um, but you come to a point in the deliberations where you feel it says click, this is the right combination to address the issues that we thought would be a relevant theme for this year's prize. So it's, it's obvious to say that the committee does want to send a strong signal in regards to the war going on in Europe right now. Obviously, we are sending a signal 
that war must end. Thank you, Bill Clarence Anderson. Thanks very much.